welcome to Sew Pretty Kitty. This is my vlog where I talk about all the things I love about sewing. And it's been too long since I've done this. I can't tell you how excited I am. I finally feel like I want to make a vlog for you guys and show you what I've been doing. And I'm so sorry um, if you look forward to watching these and there haven't been any for a while. The world has gone completely crazy. And um, you guys all know, because we're all in the same boat, and um, it's been hard to get my head in the right place to do any sewing. I don't know if you guys have felt the same. I um, normally do my sewing when the house is empty and I have time to think and I look forward to those times when the kids are at school and I'm not at work and I can just sit down and relax and that is just not happening at the moment. Like. A lot of you out there I'm trying to uh, homeschool three children which yeah that's not working out very well and um, I'm failing miserable <laughs> miserably most of the time to do that um, I'm working uh, my husband is also a key worker so the pair of us have been sort of carrying on as normal but not really normal if you know what I mean uh, the kids are still going to school a few days a week when I'm working and then yeah the rest of the time I'm just at home refereeing fights trying to get them involved in stuff that's educational um, eating a lot and um, yeah just generally feeling pretty unlike I really want to do any sewing so that explains where I've been all this time um, but I have got some stuff to show you. I have done some sewing. The last video that I put up was December and January makes, I think. And so uh, February, March and April, I have made a few things. So I do have stuff to talk about today. And I hope you're all well out there. Um, it's just, yeah, I'm not going to talk about it anymore because I'm sick of it. Right. So let's start with what I'm wearing. This is a Mandy Boat tee. I love this pattern. I've made loads of Mandy Boat tees. It's from Tasuti Patterns and it's free. You can download it and print it out, stick the PDF together and just make it. It's a boxy tee, so it's got nice sleeves. They're sort of uh, longer than three quarter length um, and a boat neck. Uh, which is lovely and then it's kind of a boxy square shape and what I've done with this one is I've used my Cricut Maker Machine to cut a decal, a heat transfer vinyl decal uh, and I went for this lovely leopard uh, in a gold vinyl which is from Arteza and um, I do have an affiliate link for Arteza so I will pop it in the drop down box below. But I really enjoyed making this. Uh, it took quite a lot of weeding out all the bits of vinyl that were not needed. And I wanted to make this to go with um, the trousers that I'm wearing. So this was a Minerva Craft Blogger make, which I've yet to post because um, I'm waiting patiently for their new website to open so that I can put my posts on there. But um, they sent me some gorgeous French terry in a sort of dark green colour and I knew exactly what I was going to make with them. So I just grabbed the book. I had absolutely no idea at the time that we were going to end up wearing clothes like this all the time. But I'm so glad I made them now because I'm actually living in these. So it's from Tilly and the Buttons. It's always typical that you can't find the page you're looking for. Um, Tilly and the Buttons, Stella Joggers. And um, hang on one second. Talk amongst yourselves. Found it finally. So it's the Tilly and the Buttons, Stella Joggers. And uh, that's from her book that is called, right way around, Stretch. And um, this is the first time I've made these jogging trousers and I couldn't be more happy with the fit, um, the comfort, the fabric's lovely and um, the French terry is the first time I've ever used French terry and um, it's almost like a sweatshirty fabric but it's not quite so heavy as that and the knees do bag out a little bit after I've been wearing it for a while but it's ever so comfortable and when you're at home you don't really care about baggy knees so I'll stand up and see if I can show you what they look like so you can see here what I've done is they've got lovely pockets in the side you reinforce this pocket edge with um, iron-on interfacing or um, something similar a piece of ribbon or something just to stop it from stretching out and then I've chosen to put a gold 
um, shoelace in in my channel so this channel is actually not holding the trousers up uh, I will give you uh, a little I'll cut away to a twirl at the end but um, the, the shoelace is not holding the trousers up there's elastic in the casing as well uh, but I what I did do is I used a new tool so I got myself some I think they're called rivets um, and a tool to put them in so I oh know eyelets is it eyelets to make metal holes so I'll just show you close up what they look like can you see there I've put metal holes in these jogging bottoms um, because to be honest I didn't really fancy making um, buttonholes in French terry I'm sure it would have been all right if I'd done it I've done it on some baby clothes recently but I just thought rivets would make it or eyelets whatever they're called would make them look more professional so I'm really pleased with these joggers they have a cuff at the bottom and I've got plans to make more pairs because they fit perfectly I think I made a size four I think anyway moving on um, should we talk about yes let's talk about the indigo dress so um, in my last vlog I think I mentioned or I showed you the green um, is it crepe I think it's crepe that I had gotten from myfabrics.co.uk and I just fell in love with this fabric when I saw it I really like leopard print anyway so the fact that it was this green color and had the pink on it too I just it's one of those fabrics I saw straight away and I knew I wanted to order some and this is the indigo by Tilly as I said uh, I have to be honest I wasn't sure about this pattern when I first saw it I didn't know whether or not I would like the fit on me I'm not normally one for wearing clothes that are this loose and baggy um, but I do like it I have worn it once but then of course the world went mad and I've had nowhere else to go in it because even at work I'm wearing uniforms now so um, yeah I can't even wear it to work but I did wear it one day to work and everybody complimented me on it so that was nice um, so it's got a longish skirt comes just about to I think above my knee but again I will put a twirl in um, I went with a long sleeve option I didn't put any ruffles or anything on it because I knew with the gathering it might be a bit too fussy for me um, it's got facings which I'm not a massive fan of facings to be honest uh, they do tend to roll out a little bit even though I've understitched them really well um, but when I'm wearing it it's not too bad and the one thing I had an issue with with this dress the worst thing I found was leveling the hem so I am under the assumption that this pattern is meant to have a straight hem because you've got a slight you've got a gentle curve that goes up and down on the front of the dress and then down on the back of the dress um, but I was assuming that the the hem of the dress would be straight um, and it just wasn't and looking at the pattern pieces I couldn't see how it could ever be straight unless I've done something wrong but um, I put it on my mannequin and looked it up and down for a few days and then I used um, my mannequins got like a special um, measuring device thingy that comes out the bottom that's like a long stick with a ruler on it that you can use to level a hem so once I'd hung it for three or four days to let it drop a bit if it, you know this kind of fabric does tend to move out of shape quite a lot so I didn't want to cut it off until I was certain that it was going to stop um, changing shape and then I just leveled the hem off um, until I was happy with it but that that was a bit of a pain in the backside I have to be honest um, yeah so I'm quite pleased with this I'm looking forward to wearing it I think more in the autumn with um, biker boots and a leather jacket and tights because this fabric is obviously uh, being a crepe it's fairly heavyweight and probably doesn't breathe so well so it's not really warm weather gear but um, it does have pockets I did put the pockets in and I'm pleased I did because usually I don't really like inseam pockets on the hip area um, but in this on this occasion I thought I'd give it a try and it turned out really well I think because the fabrics quite drapey you can't notice them so that is probably the most fancy thing I've made the rest of the things are all comfies 
The next thing I made was a toaster sweater. So I showed you this cable knit jersey from Luby Doo Fabrics in this forest green colour and I was umming and ahhing about what to make with it so I went with a toaster sweater and I'm pleased that I did although I haven't had much wear out of it yet because um, obviously we were coming out the other side of um, winter and into spring and it's quite it's not called the toaster sweater for nothing so um, it's a pattern from Sew House 7 and it's got a high neck and then the sleeves have cuffs on the end, nice long ones, and then it's got a deep hem on the bottom. And um, I'm really pleased with it, it's nice and soft. I sewed the whole garment on my overlocker, so um, because it's got cuffs and a waistband, there's no hemming, so it's really quick and simple. And um, I think this is my third, third toaster sweater. And um, yeah, I'm really pleased with it. I lengthen this one a bit because um, I don't really like it when they when tops stop too short on my body. So I lengthened, I think, by about an inch and a half just to make sure I had enough coverage um, on my waistband. But that was a successful make. What shall I move on to next? Do you know, I was feeling a bit down in the dumps that... I hadn't done much sewing and then when I'm gathering together I know it's been a few months since I saw you guys last but I have made quite a few bits and pieces so I feel a bit happier having gotten it all out and had a look at it so that's really positive. The next thing I made was from um, the new Tilly book. Uh, oh gosh, I can't remember what it's called something simple sewing or I'll put it down here because I can't remember but um, I haven't made much from that book yet in fact this is my first make from that book and I was really excited when I first got that book and then of course all of this happened and I haven't really um, been able to tackle it so I thought the first thing I'd have a go at would be some Juno pajama bottoms because who doesn't need lots of comfy pajama bottoms uh, especially elasticated waists with the amount of eating and drinking we are doing i don't know about you but it almost feels like um it feels like i'm eating every day like it's the end of the world <laughs> and there's been lots of snacking and a lot of watching tv in the evenings with a glass of wine and peanuts or crisps and i have put a few pounds on so i need to get myself back out and running again um, but again, it's finding the time, isn't it? When you've got children at home, I'm either at work or I'm at home with the kids. There's nothing else going on at the moment. So running um, is uh, tricky, but I'm probably using that as an excuse because I could make them run with me. They are old enough to do that. Anyway, Juno pajama bottoms. So this is a gray leopard print fabric. It's from Luby Doo Fabrics again, some time ago now. She had a sale on and I just love leopard print. And um, I thought it was an unusual colour. So, And it became kind of a precious fabric for me. Um, I kept it in my stash for quite a long time. And I was like, shall I make this with it? Shall I make that with it? And in the end, I just thought, just make something with it. You can buy more fabric. It doesn't, you know... I get kind of possessive over things sometimes if I really love something and I don't want to cut into it and make a mistake but I just thought just do it and I'm so glad I did because I've wore, literally worn these pyjama bottoms pretty much every other day or at least four times a week. Um, I made the long version with cuffs on the bottom and this was just some ribbing that I had in my stash in this grey colour and they are so straightforward and simple. Um, literally just I think in her book she suggests that you sew the elastic on and then turn the elastic under but I didn't like the idea of that I, I made a casing for mine but that's about the only thing I changed about them other than shortening the leg by probably an inch because I'm only five foot four so I didn't want them to be too long and yeah so there's not a lot to say crack on and make a pair if you haven't got some because they are really comfortable and they fit me really well and I have plans to make uh, the top to go with them but I haven't got round to it yet. And then uh, the last couple of things I've made have been things for the children. 
So my son, uh, he needs more tops in his wardrobe and I had offcuts from the French Terry from Minerva that I didn't want to waste. So I had purchased myself some of this fox fabric um, that I got from the haberdashery at John Lewis uh, quite a while ago and I had bought it with the babies in mind. So. You guys know we've got two new babies in the family and it's killing me that I can't see them and hug them and cuddle them and oh. So um, I would bought this fox fabric before lockdown and I was planning on making something cute out of it for my nephew and then I brought it home and my son was like, oh I really like that, make me something out of it and my daughter was like, I really like that, I want something out of that. So I was just like, mm. there isn't, I only bought a meter. Um, so I made my son a sweatshirt and it's a, birder pattern i can't remember the number but i will pop it on the screen um straightforward again raglan sleeves a waistband and i've popped in one of the um kylie and the machine labels and it says yo mama made it and i love that and the kids love it too so um i bought a packet of those when i went to the handmade fair i think it was and that's the first chance i've had to use them so it helps him because he never quite knows which way round his clothes are supposed to go. <laughs> um, the only thing about this fabric I would say is I'm quite disappointed. It was fairly expensive fabric. I think it was probably about £14 a metre, maybe more. And I've only washed it twice and it's faded quite a lot already. So just goes to show that sometimes the more expensive fabrics aren't necessarily the best. Right, what else can I tell you about? We've been doing some crafting and stuff at home, so I have been using my Cricut machine to make cards and um, the kids really love mandelas, they like the weeding, so weeding is when you pick out, like I was saying before, you pick out the bits of vinyl that you don't want um, from the picture and that's kind of relaxing and uh, it's sort of almost addictive and very mindful so because you're just picking out tiny bits of vinyl so they wanted to have a go at that and I cut them all um, mandalas I think I called them mandalas just now it's a mandala isn't it so uh, we made pencil cases one day and that was my idea of homeschooling <laughs> Maths and English? No way! I'm going to do crafts with them, arts and crafts. So um, my eldest wanted a massive pencil case because she really loves stationery. So um, she did another one of these chameleons like I made. And if you haven't seen the one I made, pop back through my channel and look at the list of videos. Uh, but this one is it's got a blue zip and a stripy lining. And this was all made using scraps from my stash. So yeah, the fabric pens I used are also from Arteza and my other daughter really wanted a pencil case and she has put a eagle, is that an eagle or a parrot? I think it might be a parrot on hers and she really enjoyed weeding that and colouring that in so I am still really loving those fabric pens and I definitely recommend them if you like uh, art and fabric and you know creativity like that and the last thing I was going to talk to you about today was uh, a new purchase so I bought myself a new book from Amazon because I don't know about you I am missing going out to the shops I'm missing browsing things I'm missing touching fabric it's not the same when you can't touch the fabric um, I'm disappointed because I was supposed to be teaching some sewing lessons at Franklin's this year and so far that's all gone, I did one and then it's all gone to the wayside because they're closed. So I, um, I ordered myself uh, a book to cheer myself up and it's full of uh, patterns for children. So this is a really cute book, uh, it's by, hmm... It says Amy Verso, but it says it's edited by her on the front. Um, I think they're all different, actually, looking at it. So they're different designers. 
um, but it's absolutely full of really really cute children's projects and they're very straightforward and very simple but the way they've been styled just makes them just so sweet so um, I love this one the little piggy like the three little pigs he's really sweet uh, the girls were flicking through this when it first came through the door and they were like, oh, I want to make that, I want to make that, I want to make that. So there's things like hopscotch in here, there are juggling balls, there's um, noughts and crosses, projects that you can take with you, which I thought would be quite good for car journeys and things like that. There are also sort of um, blocks, building blocks, um, fruit. So for play kitchens and things, there's some nice um, pears and things in there. But the one thing I really wanted to make out of this book, which sold it to me, was the little bear on the front. So him. So I did make him. I will pop a photograph in so that you can see what he looks like. And um, yeah, so I'm looking forward to getting stuck into a few more projects out of this book. Because I don't think it, I can't remember how much it cost, but it wasn't too expensive. Um, there's a crayon roll in here as well, which I thought was a really, uh, I did make one years ago when my kids were little, but I was thinking along the lines of presents for nieces and nephews and Christmas and, uh, yeah, so cute. So yeah, I bought that. I've also had my 42nd birthday a couple of weeks ago. And my husband bought me uh, the Megan Nielsen Flint Culottes, so um, I need to crack on and make those. I've also cut myself out a coat out of some camel co coating fabric that I got from Minerva Crafts for another one of my blogger makes. So yeah, things are ticking along. Um, I have really missed doing these videos and I'm so glad I forced myself to put some makeup on today and come on and say hello to you all. I hope you're all doing okay. It's a scary time. Um, we're all feeling it no matter whether you're stuck at home and terrified to go outside or whether like my husband and I you're still trying to carry on with the fear of catching this thing. I just hope that it's um, on the way out now and uh, we can all go back to a different kind of normal because let's face it, this is not going to just go away overnight. So we'll all have to learn a different way of living to keep ourselves safe. But uh, take care everyone and um, I'll hopefully see you soon. Bye!